As the country moves toward electing a new leader, some grassroots activists are trying to map the road ahead. They're getting behind a moral policy framework to help the state's marginalized families. To tell us about the campaign in the recent Higher Ground Moral Day of Action outside the Statehouse, are a member of the National Organizing Committee with a fight for $15 an hour, Darius Cephas, and a minister from Bethel AME Church in Jamaica Plain, Reverend Mariama White Hammond. Thank you both very much for being Thank with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I, I want to start with uh, with Reverend Hammond because um, you know, in the way I just described this, you know, mixing politics and religion, and you know, sometimes people get nervous about that. I mean, mm -hmm. is that something we should be doing? Well, you know, I, I know that we as a as a country believe in the separation of church and state, and um, you know, I I have very deeply held beliefs, obviously, and I don't expect everyone to share them. You know, I I don't apologize though for the fact that you know. My um, way of thinking is very driven by the scriptures and the life of Jesus. I guess why a lot of us um, as clergy, because we were, um, there were a lot of clergy, um, about 80 clergy that were out um, with us yesterday. Um, we are concerned that when we look at our, our sacred tradition and our, and our text, they call on us to really think about those who are marginalized, um, those who are on the outskirts of society, and it feels like our politics have been focusing so much on um, helping a small number of people. Um, you know, I say to people, you know, I don't see anywhere in the scriptures where it says, blessed are the wealthy, blessed are the politically connected. Um, but I unfortunately have seen, particularly in, in our Christian community, far too many um, religious leaders who seem to be okay with um, cozying up to those in power. And I'm not saying, you know, we have to treat them like lepers, but, but my point is we need to honor what our sacred texts teach us. And what we find in the United States is that there are far too many people um, who are working hard, doing the right thing, and, and are struggling just to make ends meet. Um, I'm a Christian, and I can't, I can't be behind Islamophobia. I have to call that out. Nobody should be persecuted for their religious beliefs. So, so we were really a group of clergy um, inspired by the work of Dr. Um, Barber, but really who felt like it was important for us to call out um, that there are values that our sacred texts teach us and our traditions teach us about what is right and wrong that we feel we're getting lost in this election. Darius, you've been involved in the fight for 15. You're a fast food worker, and I guess one of the things the event did yesterday is it, it, it brought more people out. We see who they are and, and we understand them. Like, talk about who these people were. Like she was saying, it was a bunch of clergy from different religions and a bunch of people from different backgrounds coming together. It was a lot of love in the area. And that right there inspires more people to join along, sing along. When we were seeing um, this little light of minds, <laughs> we had a bunch of people on the sidewalk filming us, singing it with us. This little lot of mine, we had people in the, um, outside dancing and it was just so much love that we was putting out there that people could not just ignore it. You had to just give it back. So it was just a lot of love and it just made everybody just push themselves to the next level and think of a bigger picture versus just that small-minded ways of the way the policies are pretty much keeping it. We've been talking about that, that element that, 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 that is almost this contagious feeling and the heart, the heart that the Reverend Joe Barber uh, in his speech at the Democratic National Convention said was missing. Right. Um, so for me, again, like I said, you know, I think um, my text teaches me that what is what was radical about Jesus was his willingness to love the people that everybody else was willing to overlook. Um, that's why we uh, 2000, more than 2000 years later are still trying to follow um, his example. Um, and so when I talk to uh, my Jewish colleagues, they too are inspired by the examples of love um, that they see in their own scriptures and what the rabbis teach. So we, we were concerned, many of us have been deeply concerned by what we see to be a politics of hate and division. Um, and we don't believe that that takes us to become a better country. Um, we have some tough situations that need to be addressed. Um, yesterday we talked about everything from immigration to climate change to um, our criminal justice system. There's a lot of things that need to be addressed, uh, but we don't think we come to the best solutions or the right solutions when we come from a, pl a place of hate. Um, so I have been excited by how many clergy, um, I put a call out and I've gotten calls back from people. People sent me text messages thanking, thanking me for being one of the organizers because they were looking for a space to express um, that we believe that love 
and justice are, are the most important values, not just in our sacred traditions, but even if you look in our constitution. Um, it's about human dignity, about honoring human dignity. And we haven't always gotten it right. There's no question that America itself has struggled to honor its own ideals. Um, but we felt it was important that somebody speak up and say, um, our deepest values, our moral values, are about love, they are about coming together, and they're about asking the question, who is in greatest need, and how do we take care of them first? And then the rest of us, who have more of what we need, um, we can be glad to live in a country where if we find ourselves at the bottom, somebody will be there to lift us up. We're talking with uh, Reverend Mariama White Hammond of Bethel AME Church and Darius Cephas from The Fight for 15. Uh, so let's talk about the importance of coming together in, in your movement, The Fight for 15, because uh, this is not just fast food workers at one place, it's many fast food workers, and then the fast food workers with other people. Yeah, it was something that started with in 2012 with, with 200 workers from New York saying that they was tired of the way they was living, they was tired of getting paid low wages. And from them going on strike, it reached out to so many other states and so many other cities where fast food workers started raising up. And then from there, with low, a lot of people getting paid under $15 was raising up. Then a lot of people came out and said, this is, we have to change the whole outview on what America is. We have to change the outview of it because the simple fact is that we need to understand that the people at the bottom are not to be overlooked. And that's something that Reverend Barber and Reverend Hammond said. Like, these are things that need to be said and these are things that need to be brought to the light and not overlooked as which way everyone's trying to overlook it. Speaking of change, uh, how, how do you compare yourself now to, to, to you know, what you were before, be before all this came up? Like, before the struggle, when I was struggling a long time ago, and I'm still struggling now, and just seeing the difference between my personality then is I'm more open-minded. I'm more loving. I'm more letting people into my life versus the way I was enclosed and stated myself and pretty much if I'm a struggle, I'm a struggle in silence. This is giving me an outlook and giving me a voice almost to pretty much put my story out there and let people know that I'm out here and I'm struggling. I'm one of these 64 million people struggling and I'm here and I'm willing to speak up for myself and I'm willing to speak up for others that can't speak for themselves that's still in that box trying to figure out a way for their voices to be heard. And the more and more this campaign grows and the more and more this campaign touches other people, the more organizations come in, like Reverend Barber coming in and his idea of the moral rights. And these are things that everything on his list that he listed for moral rights is pretty much everything with me. Like I can say, yes, I've, been, I've seen this. Yes, I've been through this. Yes, I'm still going through this. These are all things that's still happening and those are things I, that definitely need to be changed, I thought was no questions really. But the mindset is growing up in the society you live in, everything comes to life and you start seeing all the realities like that your parents went through that you didn't see as a child. And they did it in silence. I'm not gonna do it in silence no more. And if my voice can be heard, I'm gonna let it sing all over the world. You know, and I think I find Darius inspiring because, you know, sometimes we'll have coordinating meetings and you know, maybe I had a long day and I went to visit some people at the hospital, but he'll come in after a 13 hour shift and still be willing to work. And for me at the end of the day, if somebody's working a full time job, there is absolutely no reason that they shouldn't be able to put food on their table and live in decent housing. For me, that's just a moral issue. If you work hard, you've got to see some fruits of your labor. I don't know if he's gonna mention this, but he's getting married next week, you know? And as a minister, I see couples all the time come in. The number one thing that, that challenges people is financial stress. So if we really believe in marriage, for all of my you know, colleagues who wanna fight for marriage, let's fight for marriage by making sure that couples have the resources they need to be happy, to raise their kids with a level of safety and, and, and wholeness. Um, and so as a minister, I, I'm so excited for them. I hope that they um, make it forever, that they, that they have that, that um, bliss in marriage that we all hope for. But I don't want to ignore the fact that if financial burdens make it hard for them as a couple, 
that's going to put a lot of stress on that marriage. So I, th I think it's important for us to see the connectedness between what people get paid and what kind of hours they work and how they're able to be parents, how they're able to be in good marriages. It's all connected. Um, and sometimes we as clergy haven't always seen those connections. We've been narrow in our focus. And, um, you know, as Reverend Barber says, sometimes that's a, that's a form of theological malpractice to, to only talk about one piece and not really see that larger picture. Well, thank you both very much, Reverend Mary Emma White Hammond and Darius Cephas. Darius, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. We'll have more news in just a moment.